is, is that that your main thing? Yeah. Your, your musician? Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, man. Well, officially, welcome to the podcast. Cool. Yeah, cool. man. Yeah, it's called the ET Podcast, and uh, this is this is it. My my kitchen. So awesome. not yeah. really not really anything kind of wild, but it looks nice. It's yeah. pretty it's pretty well set up. Like if you're gonna have it set up anywhere, like I feel like you chose the right spot. Like this this is clean. You know, yeah, nice thanks. Stuff. Yeah, it's uh it's it's nice that I can have this area like in my house <laughs> in my apartment. Yeah, you know? yeah. Absolutely. Um. So, but uh, but yeah, Ruben, thanks for coming again. Thanks and uh, yeah, I'm just really like I was really interested in, in your story. You know, mm. we initially met um, doing the Uber. I was giving you a ride. Yeah, yeah. right. That's yeah. crazy. It is crazy. I mean, I, I've met a lot of people that way. Yeah. Yeah. I've even met people that I still keep in contact with, aside from you, but mm. that I still keep in contact with. Yeah. It's kind of wild. Yeah, for sure. Um, but uh, so you've essentially traveled cross country. Yeah. On a bicycle. Yeah. 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 That's, that's wild. It's it's really fun. Um, I've been doing it for a while, to be honest. Um, the last trip I did just happened to be the biggest and like most, I guess, publicized. Uh, but like other trips I've done, you know, that trip was from from Washington to Maine, and then I've I've done other trips. My first one when I was eighteen, I was from Chicago to Orlando, and then I did when I was nineteen, Chicago to California. And then um, I did another trip around England that I saved up for. Um, it was really cool. I just like I like biking a lot. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So so wow. So Chicago, Orlando, Chicago, California. Mm -hmm. Um, and then your biggest one, Maine to, or sorry, uh, Washington to Maine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was the one that you were telling me about when we first met. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What was the trip to England? That one. So I kind of just wanted to see that whole the whole you know. England, I wanted to see all of it, so I flew my bike over there. From I flew to Ireland, um, and I took a ferry over to um, to England, and I started toward the top. I can't remember the first town name, but um, I kind of made like a Z. I made like a zigzag throughout England, um, and I just visited like every every area that I could, you know, and met a lot of different people. It was really cool. So it was essentially a you you, you biked. From the northern tip of England or uh, Britain? Yeah, yeah. Well, to the bottom. Yeah, yeah. Kind of. Um, I, I want to say I started on like the east side and then, uh, or I'm sorry, the west side, and I biked to the east side, then I biked to the west side, to the east side, oh, all the way to the bottom. Coming then, down. Yeah, yeah and uh -huh. I made it back up to England. That's to, so amazing. Yeah. yeah. It was cool. London. Yeah. London's what it was. London, right? Okay, so. So that's really interesting, actually, because that's totally like out. It's nearly outside, like I would say, like your element, mm -hmm. right? It's like your foreigner. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's it's it was a little bit easier um, because it's not too far away from like you know American culture. Like of course, like there's different cultures, but they're not far off from each other. Like they're very like you know America and you know, the UK are very established, you know, um, there's not really too much to worry about. It's actually easier to bike over there just because it's more biker friendly, um, all around. Um, cause it's a lot more concentrated of an area. Um, it was, it was really easy getting around. Um, in America cities are usually like 30, you know, if you're going out to like other States and like outside of like main cities, they're probably like you know, anywhere between 20 to 30 miles away from each other when you start getting some more rural areas. But over there, like, there's almost a town every 10, 15 miles. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, I guess I, guess I never really put that in perspective. The idea, like, oh, yeah, you were a foreigner, but it's, I guess it's, it's pretty, the language is the same. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, it was, it was really good stepping out. I, I really enjoyed being exposed to other um, other ways of living because it's pretty it's different over there but it's not different enough to where it's like a culture shock where i can't really enjoy okay you know wow, that's really interesting yeah so you were it's fairly easy to get around and yeah and you said there's a town every like 20 miles or something over there yeah there's okay. there's it's a lot um more concentrated so like you can you can 
be in a good enough area to where you don't have to worry about things. You know, you, you have access to sense. people or water or stuff like that. Gotcha. That you makes know. sense. Is it is it really like rural though, or? Um, not really. To okay. be honest, like okay. I mean, there will be of course there are like spans of land where it's not there's not as much, but you can you can reach, um, people in like more concentrated areas a lot faster than rural areas in the United States okay. because you know when when you get out to like you know open lands like uh, New Mexico or stuff like that like. Yeah. There was, there was one point where uh, I think it was between Texas and New Mexico where I didn't, there was no one and like no services for like 70 miles oh. and I didn't prepare enough for that. So I just, I was like doing all of that with like a half bottle of water and like, you know, un, I didn't eat enough food. I didn't have enough food on me. So yeah. Was, like, was this when, when you had the flat tire that you were telling me about? This, um, this was the trip from Chicago to California. Okay. So, okay. and this one was, I mean, I've had a lot of flat tires, so. Yeah, 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 I guess. That's I, all just, yeah. Uh, this one, though, I remember this area specifically because of me being underprepared for it. And and there was not enough around to help me. Um, like, maybe I could have, like, waved a car down or something, yeah. which I actually did have to do at some point. But um, it, it's a lot easier and a lot safer um in the UK, I feel like because it's a lot more like you won't you won't be without anything like that um, for seventy miles. Like okay, that's, that's huge. You know. What yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. So. I mean, if you put it into perspective, the size of England itself is probably not very large, right? Yeah, it's pretty small. Yeah, you comprise probably like a quarter of like the east coast of of the America. Something. It, something like that. Yeah. I remember I, I did like um my initial goal was to start like kind of toward the northwestern part of England, go or and then go straight to London. But it was only like five or six hundred miles, I think, something right. like that. Maybe maybe even like three hundred miles. And I was like, you know, I, I planned on being there for a month of only biking. And I was like, I'm I'm gonna finish that in like a week. You know what I mean? So I just yeah started doing the zigzag. How well so how long did it take you initially to do England? Um, well, I gave myself about 25 days of, um, uh, just being able to do whatever I want. You okay. know what I mean? Um, but it was all biking, you know, it was just yeah. like every day I'd get up and, and it was a lot more like my pace. I could do however long for whatever, just cause I, I did have that leisure amount of time. Whereas if I'm biking over here, you know, I'm doing like maybe like a, a couple thousand miles where yeah. I don't have a lot of time because I want to do other things in my life. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, so. So you gave yourself the 25 days to 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 like off. Yeah, so basically. Yeah. yeah. What um what what was your favorite trip? My favorite trip. Yeah. Um, I think it would have to be the um. It would have to be the the Washington to Maine because because huh. that was like the whole poop to PP ride yeah, yeah, yeah. and like it got you know all this traction and um, it was for a good cause and um, it was I was really I learned a lot of things met a lot of people um, and I I would follow that one closely though by the first one I ever did because it really opened me up to doing things like like that ride you know it was it was like my first test run ever huh. and. It was great, and I loved it so much that I did it again, and I plan on doing it again and again. So. You mentioned it was for a good cause. What was it for? Yeah, so um, I was raising money for the Yemen Relief and Reconstruction Foundation. So in, in Yemen, there's a war going on um, that's happening on, you know, on the Yemen ground um, where, like, tons and tons of people, I think it was, like, um, like 24 million people being affected in a country that has 31 million people. Oh, shit. And it's like a like a like a real crisis that's yeah. going on. And for the longest and even still now it's not talked about enough because we're all in the comfort of our own homes and stuff. Yeah, absolutely. And and you know, not and you know, why would why would people want to worry about some uh you know, a country that they don't, you know, they don't a lot of people don't even know about Yemen, you know, they don't think of it as like it's country simply because they've never even heard of it sometimes you know yeah um so because it, it it does sit um it sits toward the um the bottom of like the 
um, United, was it Arab Emirates? I don't know. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah, so United Arab Emirates. Yeah, that's the Dubai. Yeah. Right. It, well, it's like sitting in, in those Middle Eastern countries toward the bottom. And so, like, they're kind of, like, all bringing – it's it's that, the UAE, um, you know, fighting on their – on the Yemen soil. Right. Um, okay. And so it's – you know, and then there's, like, blockades that, that are um, imposed to where it doesn't allow food to come in, stuff like that. Um, and it, it's it's really hard out there. Um, it So the top is um, – I don't remember what country borders it, but the bottom, there is not really anything connecting. So there's just kind of, like, all the weight of everyone coming in on them from, like, wherever they can, you know, get in. Uh, it, it really sucks, you know, and I I felt that I, I came across that story on Twitter um, and hearing about it, I um, I just realized that I wanted to bring light to something that is not talked about enough. You know, there's there's a lot of things that are going on in the world that are really bad. And and while that's the case, you know, there aren't something like what's happening in Yemen is something that can be helped right now and that would would benefit right now if people heard about it and could help you know so 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 yeah i mean i think that's really interesting because um i mean interesting that that you give your 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 work and i i, I guess passion you know to to something that's a, a cause for for something that you know you essentially care about are you are you do you have any ties to yemen is there any specific reason or do you just genuinely care yeah i, I don't um like i'm not um I actually met like my first um, Yemeni friends through this, um, but I didn't know anyone prior to that. Like I didn't have I didn't have any real connections to it. But I heard the story and and I was thinking about ways to you know get in contact with people who work directly um, in Yemen because there's you know there's like um, like Red Cross and things right. like that, um, but there's not enough focus directly like there's i wanted to find people um a group that works like you know hand to hand with these um with who's you know affected over there and and so the yemen reconstruction uh relief and reconstruction foundation um they do that and so i reached out to them and i i just asked them i'm like you know is there anything i, I want to do this for you guys um how can i how can i do this right and we just kind of like had like a general plan of you know, ways to to speak about it the right way, and um, you know, I just wanted to make sure that it was something that I would do the right way because I've never done something like that before. But I know that, um, you know, poop to pee pee, like you know, it was like a really big meme on Twitter. Um, I was like, you know, there's the possibility of people hearing about it is kind of large. Um, you know, it, whether it does or doesn't blow up or whatever, um, using the potential opportunity of that meme to bring light to something that's important feels good to me, right. you know, um, even if it's like a silly thing, it, you know, a silly topic of like people point to PP Creek for something that's more serious. It's, it's kind of being able to like bring the crossroads together, um, because, you know, it's it's hard. There's Like I said, like there's a lot of like bad things that are happening in the world yeah. that, um, you know, it's, it's hard to, to focus on or like, you know, people just want to block it out and stuff like that. But if I could just like talk about how to help and and do that, um, you know, the, the helping process was, was pretty easy. You know what I mean? Like um, it was like, you know, something like a donation of like $50 could feed a family of six for like a month, you know, wow. and wow. and it's like, you know, something like that. And you yeah. know, it doesn't have to be, you know, um, any donations, wild. you know, yeah. it doesn't have to be anything crazy. Uh, it could be nothing, but it's just putting that information out there is, is helpful, you know, absolutely. It brings light out. So. Oh, absolutely. So how much have, have you raised so far? So during that campaign, um, I had a goal of five thousand dollars, and I ended up raising eleven point five thousand dollars. Wow! So eleven and a half grand, yeah. Yeah, it was it was really cool. Um, That's a lot of dollars, yeah. Yeah, for the first my maybe month and a half, we were sitting at like fifteen hundred, and I was getting like super nervous because I like to I like to meet my goals, you know. Yeah. Um, and um, then I I finally got to the pee, pee creek in ohio and it took like it was like 36 days of biking it was like 2500 miles 
So and this was so this was you were kind of raising it as you were doing the trip. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then you were kind of tracking the money coming in and this and that. Yeah. So you said it was about a month and a half in. Yeah. Where you okay? Yeah. So um, I finally fin got to the um, you know, PB Creek, and um, and then I tweeted about it, and then that tweet ended up blowing up. Um, you know, there's a ton of people that saw it and, you know, donations were coming in and like the very next morning, um, I had hit my goal and then more and more donations are coming in. It was like such a good feeling to, you know, even if, you know, money aside, you know, millions and millions of people saw that, whether it was, um, through Twitter or through Facebook or Reddit, it was, you know, it was on the news, like, you know, and wow. it was all tied you know, to something that was important, and yeah. a lot of people got to hear about it, you know. Yeah, definitely, I mean, um, yeah, I mean, just all together, the story's amazing, you know, you, your kind of travels through the country, I mean, going to going to England and doing it, and then it, it leading you to this, you know, great cause for something mm -hmm. that people, people don't know about, and then essentially, you're given a light to, um, I, I think that's amazing, man. I think that's amazing. I think that you definitely deserve, like, your story deserves to be heard and, and just your passions and everything that, that you work for is super important because you're right. I think in America, we take a lot of, I mean, everything for granted, yeah. you know? And it's like, you know, we need more people to, to bring light to, to certain things. But like you said, yeah, there's a lot of, Unfortunately, there's a lot of things that need light, Yeah. you know, um, and then honestly, man, I, I think the politics has a lot to do with it. You know? Oh, yeah. I mean, I think just the whole issue of the Middle East and, and what's going on there has been going on for, you know, God yeah, knows yeah. how long. And, and a lot of that, I think, is, is just falls on the backs of politics. Yeah. Like, you know, it's it's a lot. It's a, it was a really big deal because, you know, the U.S. was selling you know, military weapons to um, to the UAE, and that those are the weapons that are being used to hurt people in Yemen, you know what I mean? So that's, you know, when, when riots happen and when, um, you know, when people talk about it here, they talk about it because they want the U.S. to stop selling weapons for money, you know sure. what I mean? Because that's, that's, you know, a source of income. Yeah. Um, and it sucks, you know what I mean? Like, being able to, to make profit off of people's lives like that's terrible you know and and it's it's really hard to to combat that because we're we're all small individually but when we you know when we team up together and we you know let the government know we let you know the bigger powers know that there's a lot of us you know if, if everyone shows that they care like things change you know um yeah. and so being able to bring light to people individually um can help very much you know? yeah so yeah absolutely man i mean I, I think that's great and uh you know i think when you do the right thing yeah everything works out you know and yeah. i mean it sounds like it has in this situation it's yeah it's it's been you know um there are still you know things happening over there um that it, it's hard to uh, it's it's hard to be able to you know help um you know, just from here, you know, I wish, I wish I, you know, I would love to go over there and like help directly. Um, and I'm sure a lot of people would, um, but it, it's just hard to, to do things, you know, by myself and like on individual people's levels, like the individual level of my Yemeni friends out here who are also very passionate, um, about it. And, um, it, it's hard, you know? Yeah. I mean, I think it's important though. I mean, you know, because it's like, you, just because you guys are divided and essentially individuals, you know, you still make up that, yeah. that push for and the relief and, and the money and the supplies and everything, you know. Yeah. So um, I think, you know, it's like it's like the smallest speck of dust is going to make a difference, I think. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, every, you know, that's, that's why even even if it's really hard individually, that that just makes, you know, the... Um, you know, the unity of the people who care about it that much more important. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. So going back to your, your bike riding adventures, so how did, how, what kind of influenced you to, to do this? Um, I, I don't really have um, too much influence from others to do this because 
I actually really don't know anyone, like, before I started biking. You know, I started biking when I was, like, 15 or 16. Um, maybe that was, like, one of the, like, turning points for me. Um, was I, I did this one little trip where um, I had strict parents growing up. Um, but when I had a bicycle, they were like, okay, just, you know, go be back at a certain time, you know? Um, so then I, I took this bike and I was gone for like, I think I did like 50 miles that day Holy for shit. the first time. And I was just going down this trail and I came back and it was kind of dark and I got caught in the rain and everything. Yeah. Um, but I was like, damn, like that was a lot of fun and very freeing. And, yeah. um, I feel like that was like a really big turning point for me. Um, I haven't been able to, you know, just just because I like the adventure adventurous aspect, I don't really feel like there's too much, um, you know, inspiration outside of like the experience that I've had with it. You know what I mean? Gotcha. Yeah, definitely. I I think that's that's pretty amazing in itself. You know, when you essentially like you're your own inspiration. You know, you're kind of like what you do, your habits, um, kind of like you know let you fall into into some sort of passion that. You know, yeah. you never even knew you, you, you'd come across. Mm-hmm. So, how, so how many trips have you done altogether? I've done uh, four trips. I okay. Think. So I did one when I was 18, 19, 21, and 23. Yeah. And uh, do you have anything coming up in the future? Yeah, I do. Um, I have one that I'm still planning out, but um, it's like very a very rough draft but essentially i'll be going to all four corners of the u.s okay so. okay so okay so as far as the points can go yeah like in washington and maine right? yeah so i'm gonna Florida. go to, i'll probably like go to like main cities um okay be from Just like major dense cities yeah like so i'll be um washington um what's the main city up there uh, uh well there's seattle four, there's seattle yeah that's the one yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll start in Seattle. I'm going to go down to um, San Diego. Okay. Um, then I'm going to cut over to Miami. Um, and then I'm going to go up to Boston. Okay. Uh, okay. Maybe I'll touch Maine just to say I touch Maine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then are you um, going to shoot across back to Washington? No, I'm going to go to Chicago. Okay. Uh, maybe, like, some other stuff there. I have, like, other details that I'm working out right now that will probably make me put, put in a lot of um, – a lot of miles. Uh, it's looking the way I, I have it envisioned right now is about like seven thousand miles. Okay. And um, you know, I kind of have like a big like you know seven thousand miles in Chicago. Uh, it's just throughout the U.S. Um, seven thousand miles. Oh, seven thousand. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. I'm thinking because yeah, because I know two. It's two thousand from Chicago to L.A. Yeah. And then I'm thinking, I thought it was like 700. I'm like, what do you mean? Oh, it's yeah. almost like it's more than that. But yeah, 7,000. Wow. Okay. Yeah. That's so a lot. It, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's like on the, you know, on the larger scale um, of things that I want to do with this trip. But I really want to, uh, I realize that a lot of people, a lot of people kind of do trips, but they don't do like um, trips that are like, um, 7, I feel like they're. Miles. Well, yeah, 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 definitely. It's a definitely on the longer side. Um, also, I feel like um, maybe through like TikTok and like maybe it's not just posted on social media enough or the right way. So yeah. I kind of want to just be able to like share as much as I can. Okay. Um, try to make it like a daily thing of just like little things that I'm doing and stuff like that. Yeah, I, you know, it's 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 it's, it's an interesting concept of like this like you want to record everything, you want to get it out there. I mean, I, I would say from my my perspective, I'd be like, well, you, you need to take a videographer with you. You know, yeah. I mean, you, need, you need a guy. But I mean, you know, that's obviously probably more money. You need someone just as passionate as you. Yeah. You know? So that's kind of. Uh, but so is this going to be this next trip coming up? Is, is it more of like a, you kind of want to bring more attention to to this idea of like biking cross country is, is there a cause behind it yeah i i don't know if i'll have um a specific cause um i just i just really like biking you know what i mean um and it, it was really it felt really good to do it beforehand which is why i'm thinking about doing it again but ultimately i was just like wow i kind of want to go to all four corners and say that i did that yeah you know I mean? so. is is it do you do it because it's it's like a love for you 
do you like genuinely get excited and and love being out there and so vulnerable? Yeah. Yeah. Is it like a passion for you? Yeah, I you know um, the the way I live my life right now, um, I'm not very um, on my own. So like just me being a musician as as work, you know what I mean? Like trying to get into that. Um, that position of you know being full time and having like true sustainability as a musician it's really hard right now um and i don't mind that because I, I love being a musician but i love the um i love the way biking feels to me on like a lot of different levels i love i love being in nature i love putting in that work i love just having no no real like everyday worries. It's just me and the road, and um, and it's 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 fun, you know. And, and you have like a bunch of different experiences, um, and you really get to know a lot about yourself. And um, I've spent you know hours and hours alone, you know, with with my mind and just being able to kind of pick myself apart. Um, and I've I've learned a lot. Uh, you know, I've been I've been real. Um, yeah, just real, real connected, uh, really connected with myself. Yeah. So no, that's amazing. I, I agree with that. I think like kind of like a mental solidarity. Yes. Is, I think important. I think it's healthy, you know, because I don't think a lot of people get to experience that. You know, and we're so crazy caught up in life. And, oh yeah. And, 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 and our jobs and what we have to do and this and that. Mm -hmm. You know, people are are kind of just like they put themselves on autopilot. Yeah, exactly. You know, and they're like smiling and saying hi and this and that and whatever, but like nobody ever really gets to to know themselves. Um, and I think that's amazing. When you started biking, was there moments where you really doubted if you were doing the right thing? Yeah. You know, if it's something you want to continue. Yeah, I mean, um, honestly, the hardest day I think I've ever had was the very first day. Of my very first trip no way. and um, it was it was like uh, I was leaving Illinois I was leaving from Chicago um, and and I remember um, it was just like really hard because I, I was ready to do all the stuff on myself and it was like fun for the first day but then the first night came of having to find some place to sleep and I've never done that before um, so I, I kind of just went and I set my tent up in a corner of a t like a small town where no one like could mess with me, and my tent ended up breaking. And it was like maybe how, how late was it? Maybe like eleven o'clock at night. Oh. And I was like, okay, um, maybe I should go find a place that's a little bit more secluded, um, with my you know with the parts of the tent that work, so that way I can set it up in a comfortable way. You know what I mean? Sure. Um, so then by then it was probably like. 12 30 or something like that and my tent um i set it up a little bit but there were tons and tons of bugs and mosquitoes oh, out no and i would try to lay down yeah. and i would just be eaten up and i would try to take like this thin blanket that i had and it did not matter and by then i, I would look at the clock and it's like two something in the morning and i'm like dude i can't i can't sleep like this right um so i had to look um uh, on my phone, I was looking for the closest Walmart, and it was, you know, I think I must have biked like 60 something miles that day, and it was pretty good, but then the closest Walmart was like 15 miles in the other direction. Oh. So I had to get on my bike, pack up my things. It was like 2.30 in the morning. I biked to this Walmart, just like completely mind dead. And um, I pulled up to the Walmart, I bought a tent, and I, I set it up in the most like, visible place because I just did not care. I was like, I need to get this yeah. sleep. It was like 5.30 in the morning. And, uh, and I, you know, I woke up late. I probably woke up around like 10 or 11. I'm like, you know, 50, 60 miles from home. And I'm like thinking, I'm like, that, that really sucked, but like I don't think it could actually get worse than that. You know what I mean? So and You thought it couldn't get worse than what you just went through. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Because it was just like inexperience um bad equipment um you know um uh, just like by myself um no one to help me um 
you know, frustrated, sleepy, tired. Um, how much? How much? I probably have to like break something to to be you know in a worse position. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like it's like all of the above. Yeah, I mean that's I guess when when you say like oh how much worse could it get my my thought is like yeah I'm starting to think of like well you could get like attacked by a bear or something yeah I mean it would but, I, that's yeah. that's like one of the things too is yeah. like the, when I do these trips like I have to get into the mentality of like could I die like yes I can yeah. but realistically you can die anywhere you know yeah. what I mean absolutely um, it's it's like could you put yourself in a more uh, a vulnerable position by doing this, yes, but I don't, I don't really like the idea of living in a in a comfortable bubble yeah. um, for the sake of you know being afraid of like dying. You know what I mean? Because right. I could die anywhere. I could die uncomfortable at home. I'm, right. Something stupid. You know, like. Yeah, I mean, I in that aspect, people are they self sabotage every day, mm-hmm. right? I mean, there's people just stuffing McDonald's and all this shit down their throat, yeah. you know, like overweight, you, you know, you got heart heart disease, right? It's like the number one cause of death in the states. Mm-hmm. I mean, and a lot of that comes from like obesity. Anyways, the point is, yeah, you're right. I mean, there's so many things that you know harm us or we're, we're vulnerable to that we can die or, or whatever yeah but we don't feel vulnerable because we're we feel you know we're in the safety of the city mm-hmm. you, you have the ambulance you have everything but when you're in the middle of like 60 miles of like road yeah and then there's no you know you probably don't have reception at some points or whatever mm-hmm. then that is a very scary thought yeah, it it's it can be it can be scary, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um but it's like, you know, what what's the difference of, you know, doing something like this versus like, you know, just like camping or something? It's really right. just like camping, you know what I mean? Yeah. You're just on a bicycle instead. Cuz realistically like if you go out of your way like, you know, you know, speaking about this too, like people in the US are not like in general are not as bad as like people like to believe, you know what I mean? Like, For sure. And I feel like a lot of people forget that. And, you know, it's, um, it's, I've, I've met terrible people on the road, but I've, I've met a lot of really cool and helpful people that have like saved, you know, saved me in, in certain ways. And like, um, I just, I just feel like, um, there's, there's not too much to worry about to where like you don't, you can't do what you want to do. Cause, um, you know, if that's something that's stopping you, like just being afraid of like the world, like I don't know, I, I can't, I can't live like that. You know right. what I mean? Um, no. Yeah, definitely. And, and maybe I, I live in a more extreme way of that, but like people let the smallest things get in the way of, of their pursuit. You know, and right. like being afraid or like you know, um, whether it's just like being afraid of being vulnerable or vi- financially unstable or like you know of of the what ifs and stuff like that. But like you know, if if that's what you want to do, then just like go do it. Right. Yeah, no, absolutely, man. I mean, that's, and that's, you know, that ties into, like, everything we were saying. I mean, it's, we live in a world where everything is very kind of, like, um, um, it's just, it's just confined, mm-hmm. you know? You're confined to, to the school you go to. You're confined to your parents' house, your job, you know, the, you know, whatever it is that you're doing in your life. But, yeah. and, and I don't know that there is a lot of, like, um, influence for people to get out, you know? I feel I feel like we're kind of raised to to in this condition of like you do this this and this yeah and then you get this this and that you know yeah. and it's not like explore yourself explore you know find who you are you yeah know yeah what I mean it's... like you know get in touch with nature you know yeah and and I feel like it's kind of hindering yeah it's it's not you know a lot of people get really comfortable with you know get a job and right. you know work your nine to five. Get get stable, uh, you know. Prepare for the future, and it's not it's not the worst thing. But if if you want more and it's getting in the way of you wanting more, then that's when it's like you know a problem because there is so much more out in the world to yeah. experience and and get your hands on if you want to. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, yeah. m- maybe not a lot of people want to do it in the way that I do it, or uh, they want maybe even bigger things than, than what I want, or maybe they want things that are just a little less, but they'll do it a different way. But it's, it's, it mainly comes down to 
getting in the way of yourself and how often people do that. You know? Right. So. Yeah, I mean, and I think we often forget, like, we're, we are our own worst enemies, right? Mm. Like, you, uh, people don't realize that if they're struggling with something, it's, it's really their own struggle. Yeah. And it's not so much the elements outside of, of their control. Yeah. It's just that they're mentally in this, like, blockade. And, um, yeah, it's unfortunate. And that's why I love meeting people like you, you know, that, that step outside these boundaries of kind of society. And it's amazing. I like how you said that, you know, despite what people might think about, about people in America, people are generally pretty nice. Yeah. And it's not like, you know, unfortunately, going back, goes back to politics again. Mm-hmm. You know, the political parties just make the American people out to be like something that it's not. Yeah. Um, but a, a point I wanted to make about that was I used to tell people that all the time. I used to say, I don't know where this idea that like we're so racist, you know, essentially it's, it's kind of an example of this, but you know, comes from, because I'm like, I meet people on the street all the time, all different colors, all the, you know, and, and people are really nice. I mean, people are nice generally yeah. to each other you know, to their neighbors, whatever, regardless of, of skin color, you know. So for me, it was just it's odd to see this this kind of narrative pushed on, you know, from like mainstream media, you know. Um, so I think that's awesome that you got to, to go out and, and meet so many people and you kind of like, you know, owe your, your life or your trip to. Yeah. What was your favorite place to visit? Um, hmm. I think... I really liked biking in Vermont. Okay. It was really beautiful out there. Yeah. And um, it, it felt, it just felt like really good because I've never even, I would never have pictured myself being up there. Um, and it was just like, just very beautiful throughout the whole way. Vermont so, is the East Coast? Yeah. It's on the East Coast? Mm-hmm. Is, it, is it close? It's not close to the Virginias, is it? Um, it's it's above that. It's, it's, it's above the Virginias. Yeah. yeah. It's next to... Um, it's tiny, right? It's It's Vermont? pretty small. Yeah. yeah. I just um I've I've driven from Chicago to Florida, Chicago uh Florida back up and I've gone at one point I diverted to um like East Coast Myrtle Beach mm. and then so we hit the Virginias and yeah. and every time I think of the East Coast I think of the Virginias it was like a really beautiful area. Oh yeah, the country. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm guessing and that's why I was like I'm I'm wondering if it kind of filters that that like landscape filters into Vermont. Yeah, yeah, it, it definitely, um, they have, like, similar feels, for yeah. sure. Um, I was in Virginia a couple months ago, um, and it was it was awesome. It was yeah. super pretty. Um, oh, shit, yeah. I didn't get to, I, you know, I've never biked through there yet, but, you know, I feel like it would feel very similar to being in Vermont. Um, yeah, it's very mountainous, right? Yeah. A lot of mountains. Um, so I know I asked you before, but what's kind of, like, a memorable encounter with like a wild animal oh man uh yeah i mean like you know they they're definitely out there um and it just it's 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 been different i've I've had like the the most annoying ones that i've had that are you know fairly scary are like country dogs because like if you're biking in the country people usually you know they own a big piece of land they have big dogs they let them run around wherever and if if you pull up on a bicycle they're definitely gonna chase you. Really? Because that's what they yeah. Because you know oh, they're shit. there to protect their whatever and and some dogs you know some dogs are just like lazy farm dogs and they don't care too much or they're like excited to see you but then like sometimes you'll come across like a you know like what looks like a police dog like a German Shepherd and they're like fast as hell and, and if you were any more tired they would definitely get you like stuff yeah. like that like I've had those encounters before. There's a lot of strays. Um, in certain areas, um, like Texas has a lot of, I, I was in Texas for a little bit, but there's definitely a lot of strays that when I have to bike through Texas, I'm not looking forward to encountering. Yeah. Um, and that's just like on the dog ex- aspect. Cause I mean, um, one particular moment that I've had, um, while like in my tent was, um, I was at the bottom of like a hill next to a tree and, um, at the top of the hill, an animal fell come down my way, 
like I hear it tumbling, you know, it's oh, probably like oh, I think you were, I think this is the one you told me about, mm-hmm. right? okay. Yeah, yeah, and and that is probably like the scariest encounter, because it sounds mad, it sounds like a massive animal, I, it could be anything. You know? So this thing tumbled because it like slipped or something, or? I don't know, you know, animals, you don't even, okay. yeah, because right. animals be dumb as hell sometimes, yeah. and like, you know, I like, I wouldn't be surprised, but I wasn't, I could not even think, I, I didn't care how it got down here, I'm like, yeah. I, I just want this thing to, to go away, you yeah, know what yeah, I mean, because yeah. it sounded, it sounded like a big, and like, if I put my hand outside of my tent, like I probably could touch it. Yeah. You know what I mean, but I, wow. I was laying down and I'm just, you know, I'm just, you know, paralyzed. Like I did yeah. not move. I could not move. I didn't want like any problems. Right. Um, and it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's animal, right? Yeah. 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 It's, it's, um, you know, I couldn't even guess what kind of animal it is, but like when it got to the bottom, all you hear is just like a, it's like breathing. Yeah. Like right. real heavy breathing. Yeah. And I was just, oh, Man, and that had like my stomach all in it, and I was like, "Damn, like how am I gonna?" One one thing you have to kind of like mentally prepare for is like, how what animals if you come across them, how are you gonna fight them? Like you know, what I mean? oh, and because like, because <laughs> you know, animals are in in America like you know certain places have more animals than others, but no yeah. no place is like you know purged of every animal ever. You know, what I mean? like yeah, you know, like a you know like bears or like you know well, coyotes. There, there like, were, yeah, well there was wolves. There, there, there were there were no wolves, right? I mm-hmm. think for a long time in America, and they just recently, or maybe not America, but maybe in certain states. Mm-hmm. Might be yeah, yeah. Them. And then now they just started repopulating wolves, like I don't, I don't know, like in Texas or something. I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't know too much. I know that animals, you know, there's more. Um, some animals are more native to certain states than others. Yeah. Like, I would be more worried about like bears and like you know you know, coyote packs in Montana yeah. a lot more than, wow. like, you know, say, L.A. area. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, Yeah, of course. Um, so, um, but that doesn't mean that, you know, it, they couldn't just appear out of nowhere, you know. Yeah. I have, like, my own rules set aside for making sure that I don't come across these animals. Um, like, I, I make sure that if I'm setting up my tent, um, I'm not too far away from, like, the main road because they don't, like, you know, they don't come across the main road, but, like, if you're in deep forest, like, you know, like, the chances of you encountering something, um, or their curiosity being peaked at your smell, you know, they're more likely to, you know, mess with you and stuff like that, but. How, how do you travel? Like, are you sticking to the main road pretty much the yeah. whole time? Okay. As much as I can. Yeah. Um, because specifically for, like, animals and stuff safety like that. Safety reason, yeah. I mean, yeah. And it's going to get you there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. In the highways. Yeah. Yeah. Um, have you ever had, like, a scary encounter with with a person? With a person? Um, yeah. In, I've had one that I can know for sure, um, which was in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Mexico. Okay. Yeah. And I I was taking a picture of this one restaurant because it had a funny name. And there was, like, this um, guy who was looking at me funny. Um, and I think he thought that I was taking a picture of him. Um, oh. So he started approaching me. And I got on my bike. And, like, I could just, like, feel like that, you know. Attention, yeah. Yeah. Was it, was it like, a homeless dude or was it just some guy standing there? It was some guy, like, you know, like, hoodie up and, like, um, you know, just the way that he was approaching me was, like, quick. And I'm like, damn. Oh. I have no problems with anyone, you know what I mean? Right, I'm right, just trying right. to be on my on my own. Yeah. And, uh, but honestly, like... You just ride away. Yeah, like, yeah. No, no, like, no confrontation. Yeah, I, I pulled out I pulled out as soon as I could because I could just see what, what his direction... Did like, he yell at you? Did he say anything to you? No, that was right. the scary part. Because, right. yeah. <laughs> like, you could just, like, see what... I don't know. Um, if, well, it's a good thing he didn't start running after you or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I, I feel like if I was to... Just like in that, you know, because I've met a lot of different people and I've yeah. been on, in a lot of situations, and I feel like you know being able to to understand the situation that you're in is like really, really vital in something like that. You know what I mean? Cause, yeah. Because you do come across a lot of different scenarios with people, and like, um, you know, there's everyone has like different comfort zones, and um, yeah. Yeah. you know, like so I don't, I don't make it a point to. I like to, you know, I I, I keep. Um, when I go on these trips, like, I raise my own money. I work really hard, like, doing different jobs. And, right. Um, but, like, I like talking to people if I can, you know what I mean? Um, Do you work on the road? No. 
Okay. I just, uh, it just, I, I work, uh, I work a lot of odd jobs, yeah. especially just cause like until music is like really doing well, um, like now music is doing a lot better, but like, I want to be able to like, you know, live somewhere and like yeah. have a workspace, but you know, on the come up these past few years, um, you know, I just, I'll, I've been like a roofer, I've worked in a factory, uh -huh. I've worked at like a trampoline place. Uh -huh. I've done a lot of odd jobs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I, when I want to do these trips, I save up from these jobs and then I just head out and yeah. I let it last. Cause honestly, especially now, um, that, you know, still, you know, I have my own place. Like, um, it, it comes out to like the same as like renting a place and like eating. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah, but your monthly. It's like expenses. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's pretty similar. Right. Um, but I just get to have a lot more experiences. You know what I mean? I get to see a lot of different things. Do you like, um, do you like, I got a lot of questions to ask, but do, oh, yeah. you, do you, do you like lose weight? Do you go through like a body transformation when Dude. you go on this? Yeah. Yeah. Good yeah. Time? Hell yeah. Yeah. Cause man, there's especially like, it's every single time too. Um, I can eat pretty much whatever I want. Like, yeah. Cause I burn more calories that I could even, that I could even assume, uh, consume, you know, like I, I probably burn, I burn like a minimum. I'm riding between like 80 to 120 miles a day, more or less, depending on how I feel. Holy shit. And yeah, I, I like, you know, cause it's really, I wake up, I eat something and I'm just on my bike and I listen to music or like, you know, maybe give someone a call or I spend time to myself. Um, but it's just staying on the bike is the thing. You know what I mean? Uh, do you, do you get on a schedule? Like, do you have a daily schedule? No, no. Gosh. I, I, I keep it pretty simple for myself. Like I don't, I hardly track myself or like, I don't have like main goals unless it's like time-based. Like I have to be, you know, maybe like in two months I have to be at like a show or something or cars. Yeah. Um, but I like to keep it free so that way I, I can, can continue enjoying myself. You know what I mean? Right. And, um, yeah, so, and that's the thing, like, with, um, just, like, eating and stuff, like, I like to eat different places, and I like to eat good, you know, yeah. and, and on the road, um, I do eat whatever I want, because no matter what I eat, I'm, I'm just burning so many calories, yeah, and, um, I, you know, there's days where, like, I really try to push it, like, sometimes I'll have, like, 2,500 calorie meals of, like, chicken and bread, and, like, you have 2,500 calories in one meal? Yeah. One sitting? Yeah. Holy shit. Like, I'll eat, like, a... I like to, like, pull up to, like, a Walmart and buy, like, a, a chicken. Yeah. And then buy, like, a little thing of barbecue bread and, like, some... Like, maybe, like, a dessert, like, a um, sour gummy worms. Okay. Probably my favorite. Okay. So. Um, when... So, you eat... If you eat 2,500 calories in one sitting, are you eating for that day anymore? Or that's it? I, I eat again later. You eat again later. So, yeah. so despite the calories, you're you still lose weight. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's it's, crazy. So you're burning way more calories than you're consuming. Yeah. Like you can't even keep up. With I, it. I can't keep up. Yeah. With it. That's yeah. fucking wild. Um, when when you're out there, do you ever spend more time in one particular place than another, or are you moving like day to day? I, it, it depends, like, maybe, um, one really cool thing I like to do when I get the chance is, uh, like, I used to play video games a lot, yeah. and I have a lot of friends that live in different states, so sometimes I'll be like, hey, I'm, I'm gonna go to your state, like, people that I've been playing games with for years, oh, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, like, I've, I've met, I've met friends in, through biking, I've met someone in Georgia, I've met someone in Iowa, I, I have really good friends in Florida that I met through video games, and, uh um, and it's really dope. So like if I if I get an opportunity to spend time with a friend, um, absolutely. But I'm I wouldn't say I feel like the the best parts of biking in the states is not in major cities so much because major cities are you know aside from like the little gems and stuff they're fairly similar. But you know being able to to be in like the terrain and like the big like you know. Um, forest preserves and stuff like that and just like seeing like the nature like you know there's so much there's so much different terrain throughout the u.s and so many different like beautiful views and like you know different formations and stuff right. like that um uh, that's where i'll probably you know i'd want to spend some more time just like enjoying what i'm seeing and stuff and they all like lay down and um 
just kind of hang out there, take a quick nap. I don't know. Gotcha. So yeah. unless it's kind of like scheduled, you don't really like meet somebody and then they're like, hey, come hang out for a night or something like You know what I mean? Oh, oh like, yeah. I mean, yeah. if if that happens, yeah. Okay. Um, but I I am moving a lot all the time. Yeah. Um, there was one time though. It was actually in um, uh, in New Mexico. Uh, someone at T-Mobile. Um, I had to get my phone fixed because my phone zapped out. And uh, this this guy at T-Mobile, I told him about the trip, and he's like, "Hey, dude, if you need a place to stay, like, you know, you could stay at my spot." Yeah. So I just hung out with the T-Mobile dude, and. Uh, and yeah, stuff like that, or like also another time where um, I was like in the middle of nowhere in Kansas, Crap. and there's one little um, town or one little place to eat um, that I went to, like in the middle. There's like you know, twenty to thirty miles on each side of nothing. So Crap. I went there to eat, um, <laughs> and so I someone someone left a book there with their information, and they're like, I live I live on the border of Can- of Kansas. Um, if you, if you come here, um, you know, I'll give you a place to stay and eat. And it sounds super shifty, you know what yeah, I mean? Like, right. it's like, damn, like, who are you? Good time, yeah. yeah. But I was like, you know, whatever adventure. And I, yeah. I pulled up and it was just this sweet, uh, old lady and like, uh-huh. you know, she fed me and like, I had a bed to sleep on and, um, it was cool. And, you know, she, I guess she gets bikers a lot because, you okay. know, um, that's just like she likes to do that, you know. What yeah. I mean? so, so she knows that that's going on, mm-hmm. and that's, so it's pretty intentional. It's like she yeah. knows it's not just like random. Yeah. 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 That's really cool. So yeah. it's just like little little things like that, yeah. and um, those are like some that I I remember more so. Oh, there was another time in Washington where I was biking, and I was like, uh, I started in Washington, and like the first couple of days. Um, were like pretty rough because Washington is very mountainous, you know? Yeah. Um, so I was just like, someone saw me like on the road, like, you know, with not a lot of energy and they're like, you know, worried. And it was like a small town in Washington. Okay. And they're like, oh yeah, like, um, we actually live in a town like two blocks or like two, three miles away, something like that. And they're like, if you want to, if you want to come and have a place to stay, like we'll feed you and stuff like that. It was, it was like a family. Um, wow. And I, you know, I just hung out with them and, that dogs and big wow. piece of land, so beautiful and uh, that's really like that. amazing, man. That's yeah, cool. that's really is that kind of like your mentality with yeah, you know, as far as meeting people or kind of just coming into a situation where it's kind of new to you or you don't really know. Is it is it kind of like adventure and let's do this? Is it uh, is it like you're always kind of like a yes man? Pretty much, yeah. If yeah. if the people feel right to me, yeah. you know what I mean, because yeah. I'm I'm still I still have to be skeptical, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, because like I said, like there's a lot of really good people out there, but that doesn't mean everyone is a good person, right? With, with good intentions, you know. Right. And um, it was funny because even the the lady, um, the person who helped me in Washington, they were trying, they were offering me like um like CBD pills. Okay. And I was like, I will not take drugs. From yeah. It's kind of, <laughs> but, yeah. And so uh, for a second, I was a little worried, but like, I knew, I knew that she knew that it felt weird to offer that to me right away. Yeah. She's like, oh, that's that's weird. She, you know she I mean? probably like kind of got really comfortable with you, but then and it hit her that okay, maybe it's a little too much. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, exactly. So okay. And is this was an old lady? This was she's a, she was an old. Okay. She, I think okay. she was like in her thirties. Oh. Um, that's not old at all. Yeah. So she. It was her okay. and like she had like a husband and kids. And, oh, okay, okay, yeah, so, family. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so it, it was only her that saw me on the road. Gotcha. Um, but I guess I guess they're like really known and like helpful in that little town. Um, so she she helped me and yeah. um, and you know we had she made really good food and then the next day I spent some more time in that town um because there was like an auto show that was happening oh. only in that okay. town so oh, there's wow. like really nice cars like and old, free old cars yeah yeah. Yeah, and it was really cool. Yeah. Um, and there was like a band playing, and I hadn't seen you know live music because of like COVID and stuff like that, whatever. Yeah. But okay. it's a little different, you yeah. know, in certain areas how they treat it. How do you deal with the weather? Yeah, weather. Um, if it's if it's raining too much, and I don't want to be in it, then I I'll just stop biking. You know yeah, I mean? um, yeah, pull over. Yeah, and and I don't mind like I. You know, I know that weather exists. Like, I have things that combat it. Like, I have, like, little things like... Yeah, yeah. I always make sure that I have 
what I need for things that, you know, would most likely, like, of course, I'm going to catch rain if I'm out for, like, two months at some point. Like, I have to, you know what I mean? So, um, with rain, I'll carry, like, I'll carry, like, a large garbage bag to put all my things in. Okay. And I'll have, like, a raincoat. Okay. And uh, if I don't want to get my shoes wet, I'll even put, like, bags on my feet. Yeah, so yeah, So I yeah. can just, like, keep the water out. Right, yeah. And that, your socks, make sure your socks don't yeah. get all drenched up. Yeah, because then you, you're going to have, like, a whole slew of other problems. Yeah. Right? Your feet are wet and all this stuff. Yeah. Um, have you ever been seriously injured? No. Okay. No, I'm I'm pretty like um I'm I'm more of a safe than sorry kind of person yeah. when it comes to the way that I bike or like the roads that I take and like you know uh, if I have to ride sometimes I do ride on the expressway and okay. certain states that allow me to do it okay. um but yeah I'll stay as far to the right as possible and I'm like aware of the risks and like things I should you know be careful with and, for sure um so I it's been it's been really good luckily you know not, yeah. Not over, so. yeah definitely. Do you think, would you recommend for everybody to do something like this? I I recommend getting out of the comfort zone. I wouldn't, not everyone, you know, finds solace or like, you know, comfort in, in biking, you know what I mean? Or like, you know, being on their own to such a degree. I feel like it's really important to be uncomfortable in, in a way that, say like you've always wanted you know what i mean Um, things that like you feel like you can only dream of you know but some things some things for certain people are just like as as simple as like getting on a plane and like going somewhere else you know what i mean some people have never left their city or you know or like you know stay tried tried something new you know people are a lot of people are afraid to try something new so i I feel like if i was going to tell anyone to do anything it'd probably just to be getting uncomfortable and trying something new because like you will appreciate the experience in the end like you know what i mean um, so what's your biggest takeaway from from your adventures like what's the big what's you know your learning experience um i i feel like my the biggest thing that i've learned is how how much of the world there is to see and how many things there are to experience um because even if even if i may be filled with a lot of experience there's still so much i will not live long enough to experience everything you know, yeah ever you know I, I won't even touch the surface of living everything you know right but there's there's so much that that i can with the amount of life you know in me you know i have a lot of years left you know what i mean i'm 23 like i i can go do so much you know and um the only thing that could ever stop me um is myself but if I get over that, you know, um, I, I can just do so much, you know, I, I can figure it out. Like, right. I can make it work, you know, if I want it bad enough. Yeah, 23, that's super young still. And and I feel like you, you've definitely accomplished a lot more, you know, than, than a lot of people have that are in their 30s, 40s, 50s, you know. Mm-hmm. Some people live their entire lives and, and don't get to see probably as much as you have so far, you know. So I think that's amazing. One last question. Do you plan on ever going internationally outside of the States, like, kind of like a, you know... Like a different continent, like different countries? Yeah, like, but like a, like some, I don't know, like, a, you, you've heard of dark tourism? What is that? It's like where people, they go, they tourist, but they tourist in, like, war zones. Really? <laughs> yeah, it's wild. It's wild shit. It's on Netflix. It's I called see. Dark, it's called Dark Tourist. Dark, dark tourists or something like that. Interesting. I don't I don't know if I will do something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's kind of wild. <laughs> so. Like, would you ever consider like like doing South America? South America, yeah. I I would yeah. I would do South America. I, I would love to do South America. It's 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 really hot down there. I'd I'd do it like at a certain time, but there's a lot to see. like I said, there's so much to see, so much to, I'm I'm only biking in the US right now because, you know, uh, we're, we're sort of the end of like COVID and stuff like that. And, you know, being vaccinated is, is good, but it's, it's not, other countries are still dealing with, you know, they have different regulations yeah. that we do, you know, so. But, so is going internationally, I mean, I know you went to England, uh, uh but is, is that something you eventually want to move to? Oh yeah. Yeah. I have, I have like plans for that later that I, I want to do like, you know, something that lets me see the whole world, you know, yeah. and, uh, yeah. And I want to be able to not only do it for myself, but I want to be able to like 
you know, talk about it to others. And, right. Uh, just I like I like being able to to say that uh, talk about how much that there is to you know to see and do, and that if if you wanted to do something like it's so worth trying for you know yeah because yeah. a lot of people just you know are, are very afraid of of themselves and like rejection and you know uh, failure failure you know so yeah um, just being able to say just to to do something and like being being um you know an example setting an example of doing what it is that you want is it feels really good to me and, and uh you know, and then at the end of the day, even if no one's watching, like I still love being on the Yeah, that's amazing, man. That's amazing. I think your story's amazing, and I think, um, I think, I think it's it's amazing that you have that mentality of of like set the example. You know, and I mean, I think it, no doubt you are because it, it gets lets people know, you know, to get outside their comfort zone and and, and do and and act and bring awareness and stuff like yeah. that. So. Thank you so much for doing that. I mm-hmm. think that's amazing. I think that sure. we definitely need more people like you. And um, I, you know, I hope I hope your your message and, and everything grows, man, and it for grows sure. up, and, and you're able to do some great things. So um, I, I've had a blast talking to you. Awesome. Um, yeah. Thank you for having me. Yeah, man. man. Thank you so much for doing this. Yeah. Uh, it was it was it was really really amazing. So um, yeah, I'm gonna put everything up on 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 my youtube and my instagram and cool, you know cool. people will be able to find your instagram and all that stuff awesome so but uh yeah thanks so much for being here man mm-hmm. appreciate it brother. thank you thank you <clears throat> all right well that's it man